Hi, my name's Tony Phillips. I'm the historian for the Mendocino Coast Model Railway and Historical Society. This morning I'm standing in Cleone. Cleone was not Cleone in 1884. Cleone was Laguna. And if you look behind me, you can see that there still remains here a house that was built in 1884. C.R. Johnson, the father of the Union Lumber Company mill, had recently bought a uh, two-mile stretch of property, which is now Fort Bragg, and which ultimately became the site of the huge Union Lumber Company mill, which operated for over a hundred years under his and his family's aegis. Cleon, or Laguna, was important to C.R. Johnson. He had invested into, in two mills, one here on Mill Creek Drive and another about a mile up the road in Inglenook. Inglenook was a much larger place than Cleon and boast, boasted a uh, post office, which meant that you had to have a significant community to support this. Uh, C.R. Johnson's second mill was up the road at Little Valley, and he would have come here by horse. There were no trains, there were no roads of any substance. The stagecoach from Fort Bragg to Rockport took over two days to traverse the approximately 20 miles. He would have come up this road behind me and probably stopped here in Cleone to visit his two investments. He would probably have stayed at a hotel named Vickery's. We believe Vickery's was sited to the left of the 1884 house. Vickery's was well known in its day both for the comfort of its furnishings and more particularly because of the quality of its food. In addition, there was stabling here. The stables were used for the Mill Creek Drive um, mill mules or horses. We believe they were mules but they could have been horses. The stagecoach would have switched horses here and in addition C.R. Johnson would have stabled his horse here whilst he was visiting and doing business. C.R. Johnson, like all mill owners of the period, had a major problem of getting the product to market. The road behind me was not paved until the 1940s which will give you some idea of the state of the roads. All the streams had to be forded, there were very few bridges. There were no railways, at least at that point, so the only way out was by sea. And to get the, sea, the product to the um, ocean where the ships were, and more particularly how the ships operated, is of great interest to us as historians of the Mendocino coast. Behind me you can see the sign for Mill Creek Drive and behind it you can see the sign for the Ricochet Stables which we believe is the site of where the stables were that CR stabled his horse. The Mill Creek Inn, the, the Mill Creek Mill that CR had invested in was up the road here and we will go there in just a minute. We're now at the top of Mill Creek Drive and behind me, up in this flat area up here, is where we believe the Mill Creek uh, Drive Mill was actually located. It wasn't very big, it produced lumber and you can see the redwood trees around here that were cut and it also produced shingles. This mill, like every mill up and down the coast, had problems about how to get the product to market. So here we are two miles from the sea how, in fact, did they get the lumber from here to the shipping point, which was down at Laguna Point? How did they do it? Behind me you can see there is a hill. It is downhill all the way from here to Laguna Point. So they built a railway track, not a railway, because they had no locomotives. And even if they had a locomotive, it's very doubtful where it would have come up such a steep hill. So they built a track and they would load up three or four cars full of lumber, get behind it, run like hell, and push it off down the hill. And believe it or not, they would create enough momentum on the cars for the lumber and to go all the way through Laguna, or Cleone as we now know it, all the way down to the shipping point, which is at the west end of McCarrica State Park. We're now at the west end of McCarrica State Park. The tramway 
that they erected or built from the top of Mill Creek Drive came down and through McCarricka Park. If you look over to my right, you can see what is now the pond at the bottom of McCarricka Park. The pond was not always there. In the days when the uh, railroad was built from the top of the hill, this in fact was tidal. So this was mudflats and it was quite easy to build the trestle. The trestle ended just about over here, beyond the berm. The berm was erected in 1917 to carry the 10 mile branch of the Union Lumber Company's railway out to 10 mile, 10 mile river. In the days when the, the rail tracks were here from the Mill Creek Drive, um, the berm was not here because the Mill Creek Mill went out of business about 1911. So you can see the gap in the berm where the sea has started to come through. We're now standing at Laguna Point at the very, very end of McCarricka State Park, as you can see from the sign to my right. It was right here at, at Laguna Point that there was a very small community, larger than Cleone or Laguna as it was then, for the people who worked on shipping the lumber out over on the very tip of the point over here, which we'll go to in a moment. The parking lot behind me was where the lumber was stored prior to being hauled out by horse or more likely by mule to the very end of the point where it was shipped by cable out to the schooners waiting out in the very, very rough, rocky area that was so-called dog hole port. We know that there were people here because the Fort Bragg advocate in 1889 reported the death of three men who apparently were immolated, burnt to death, because they were dead drunk from drinking very bad whiskey, and the hut in which they lived caught fire, and they were so drunk they did not get out. I'm now standing on the north edge of the parking lot at Laguna Point. Behind me you can see the line of hills which go all the way up to Rockport. At every small inlet along this coast there was a dog hole port. Why dog hole? The ports were so small that only a dog could turn round in them. So if you were going to load lumber onto a schooner, that's what the ships were called that took the lumber and the other product out, it had to be in effect a very small nimble vessel. This is a model of a sailing schooner. It is very close to what we believed took the lumber from here from about 1895 through to about 1900. By 1900 sail had given way to steam, but these were the initial means of bringing everything into the Mendocino coast and taking everything out. Every piece of machinery came here on one of these or later on a steam schooner. All the supplies for the town came by schooner. Most of the schooners were built in San Francisco or north in Eureka. Some of them, a few of them, were built in um, Van Dam Park. Van Dam Park was not called Van Dam Park then, it was called Little River. And as you can see from the photograph, there were several schooners very similar to this built there. There was one very large schooner built, sailing schooner built at Albion called the Sotoimi. And if you go to our website, you can read a book produced by Louis Huff, my predecessor historian at the Mendocino Coast Model Railway and Historical Society, describing her. Believe it or not, there is still one sailing schooner left. She's called the C.J. Thayer, T-H-A-Y-E-R, and she sits at the San Francisco Maritime Museum, where she is being completely restored. She operated from San Francisco to Eureka. She was about twice, perhaps three times larger than the model I'm holding in my hand. And she operated from San Francisco to Eureka and south to San Diego. She even sailed as far as Honolulu and Australia. And uh, ultimately, later in her life, she ended up working with the salmon fleets up in Alaska. A very, very tough old lady. I'm now standing about halfway down Laguna Point. If you look over to my left, 
you can see the problem of shipping lumber out here. Rocks. Lots and lots of very, very dangerous rocks. To ship the lumber out, we had the um, people who own the mill had to get the sailing schooners and later the steam schooners to be moored off of these rocks and then a winch in a winch house carried the uh, lumber over a wire out to the pitching boat. We had 11 to 14 foot swells here the other day and up to my uh, left I'm pointing now towards Ten Mile River you can see in this picture the sailing schooner Norma which foundered off of Ten Mile River. She was not the only one to founder along the Mendocino coast. Between 1894 and 1900 we know of 69 schooners of one sort or another that came to grief and along the Mendocino coast and slightly to the north to a place called Usal. These sailing schooners were moored to wires off of the very tip of the point where you can see the people standing up there. In the picture on your screen you can see uh, the detail of how the winch worked. The lumber was bought from the parking lot where we just were by mules on uh, small carts and taken to the winch house and there it was winched out to a pitching uh, schooner. The schooners stored the wood below decks and equally important stored, stored the, the lumber above decks. About 1900 things got a lot easier for the schooners with the advent of steam. Here is a model which we're going to use in our model uh, railway layout in the skunk yard at the end of our pier, which is atypical of the steam schooners that plied the coast after about 1900. As you can see, she has a fairly extensive passenger area as well as a foredeck. In the picture on your screen now is a picture of the Brunswick, and you can see the Brunswick leaving the harbour at Fort Bragg, and she has both a passenger area and she also has got lumber both in her hold and on her decks. It was quite normal to load the lumber up to the level of the masts because the theory was that the, the lumber floated and therefore it was impossible for the ship to founder. That didn't exactly turn out to be true if you hit a rock as many of the, sc the schooners seemed to do. And it was not because of poor sailing. The storms along here were absolutely fierce. So here we are two miles from the mill and this is how they got the lumber out. How much? The average schooner would take enough lumber to build in San Francisco at between three to five houses. There was a tremendous market because San Francisco was expanding very rapidly and then in 1906 because of the earthquake the whole city was burned so the need for lumber was absolutely immense and this is why C.R. Johnson's mill in Fort Bragg capable of cutting 17 foot diameter logs was so successful. The Union Lumber Company mill operated for well over a hundred years and it, the, all the lumber until 1938 was all shipped out by uh, schooner. Even though they had a railroad which went from Willits to Fort Bragg, until 1938 schooners were the name of the day because they carried immense amount of lumber and they could be taken to a long way without unloading. So, if you lived along here, the schooner was a way of life and when it appeared in port it was a day of rejoicing because you knew new supplies had come in, new stuff from the store, food and more important the lumber was going out and business was carrying on.